momentous occasion has arrived. We all were waiting for. We would like to welcome High Commissioner of United Kingdom to India, Sir Dominic Asquith Ji, Lady Louis Asquith Ji, in the premises of Dev Sanskrit Vishwadhyale, in the foothills of Garrett Himalayas, and in the layup of Mother Ganges. Dev Sanskrit Vishwadhyale welcomes you. By lighting the lamp, we will set the beginning of this occasion. And with the clappings, everyone wants to welcome you. Om Agne Naya Supatharaye Asman Vishwani Deva Vayunani Vidwan Yuyo Dhyasma Juhurana Meno Bhuvishthante Nama Uktim Vidhema Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Deva Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha In the headquarter of All World Gayatri Parivar In this unique institution Deva Sanskrit Vishwadhyale As by Indian tradition By applying Tilak on the forehead We are welcoming them On behalf of All World Gayatri Parivar Which is spread across 70 plus nations With 5000 centers worldwide and more than millions of followers across the globe, we welcome you all once again in Deva Sanskrit Vishwadhyale. To proceed further, now it's time for university anthem. So we request all of us to remain standing for the university anthem. Kulgeet Praram. Proceeding further, to welcome our guest on behalf of all of us, who else could be the best person we have? With a global persona as brand ambassador of yoga, who represented India at UNESCO for the declaration of yoga as cultural heritage of UNESCO. He served at United Kingdom for almost a decade as a psychiatrist. 
He is working with UNO for world peace and he is also a jury member of prestigious Templeton Prize. I request Pro Vice Chancellor Deva Sanskrit Vishwadhyaya, Dr. Chinmay Pandya for welcome address. Dear friends, let us uh, start this August gathering with the recitation of the Gayatri Mantra. Gayatri, as everyone knows, is the goddess of wisdom, pure intellect. And she is the force that guides us to take the right path in the life, the path of self-refinement, Atma Parishkar, the path of social upliftment, Lokuttan, the path of humanity, Manavta. So let us begin today's ceremony with an universal prayer of peace, harmony and humanity. Gayatri Mantra. Om Bhur Bhuva Swa Tatsavetur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahe Dhiyo In the subtle presence of Pooja Gurudev and Mandaniya Mataji, I would like to start greeting the chief guest of the ceremony, Sir Dominic Ashkath, High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to India. Lady Ashkath, unfortunately Mr. Andrew Iyer and Ms. Pence could not join us today. Um, they had some health emergencies. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Honorable Registrar, of Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya and all the distinguished members of Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya, Shanti Kunj Gayatri Parivar family, dear friends, colleagues and students. I feel genuinely privileged and honored to extend a warm and heartfelt welcome on behalf of Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya Gayatri Parivar Shanti Kunj family and also on behalf of Honorable Chancellor who could not be here with us today because of his commitment in Delhi to Sir and Lady Ashkwith for sparing their precious and valuable time during their private and spiritual visit to the state of Uttarakhand. I would say that nothing would have been a fitting destination than to end their journey in Haridwar, the city that itself means gate to the divinity. Hari means divine, Dwar means gate, and how could you escape the Divine Kingdom, Devbhumi, without passing through the gate of the Himalayas? So absolutely fitting place to end their journey. And in the uh, Haridwar city, in the sacred surroundings of Shanti Kunj and Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya, which I am proud to say is serving as the cradle of Indian spirituality. And it's a delight to have both of them here, also in the pristine settings of being in the lap of Maganga under the foothills of Himalayas and in the Tapo Bhumi of Pandit Sri Ram Sharma Acharya Ji, one of the groundbreaking scholars of India, great seer, great sage, guru, master and father to all this Gayatri Parivar fraternity who have guided us to take the right path in the life. As everyone knows, Sir Ashkwith is a career diplomat. Uh, he has served as the ambassadors of United Kingdom in Iraq, Libya and Egypt. He's also the great-grandson of former Prime Minister of United Kingdom, Sir H. H. Ashkwith. His uh, profile, Gopal has just shared with you. So I would take this brief opportunity to mention about the internship model of Dev Sanskriti Vishwit Dalai to him because we had, a, we had a very short time available. So I could give him a virtual tour of Shanti Kunj and Dev Sanskriti Vishwit Dalai. He is well versed with the writings of Pooja Gurudev and uh, Honorable Chancellor. But there was little time available to discuss this unique model that is one of a kind in the entire world of the internship system of Dev Sanskriti Vishwit Dalai. So I take this opportunity to make him acquainted with the internship model. Um, the internship model, like you know, everyone knows that we have got a very different value system. The entire system, the very fabric and the ethos of Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyale is based on a community-based and interdependent consciousness. And that allows us to use our internship program to direct our students in discharging their social responsibilities. And also for them to learn that how they could contribute to the maximum for the most disadvantaged in the society. Because this is a 
free education system. Students do not have to pay for their tuition fees. They, there is no fee for the meals. They only have to pay for their maintenance. And this is possible because society contributes to make it happen. So internship system is used for them to return this obligation back to the society so that they could be free from the Samaj Rana. Jo samaj se liya hai, usse hum log mukt ho sake. And the other idea to have the internship system here is because we believe that the, our obligation to a harmonized world is incalculable. We can never pay that back. So internship system or the model or the program is mandatory to all the students. So from the year of its conception till 2000. Two, uh, when the university was established. And from then until now, uh, thousands of our students, they have gone to every single part of the India, reaching to a staggering 15 million people. About 17,000 health camps were conducted by them. About 70,000 small or big programs in the areas that were highlighted by Pooja Gurudev of social upliftment, like free health, free education, women empowerment, disaster management, environmental conservation. To name the few, they were conducted by our students, and I, I think it's been a great privilege for us to witness their progress and growth during this period of time, because it allows them to develop in two manners. Number one, it allows the students to develop comprehensively. Three things what they've said, Atma Nirman, Parivar Nirman, Samaj Nirman. Their own development, development of the families, development of the society, and that is possible through this internship program. And also, it allows a student to learn the primary tenets of the Indian culture, Bharati Sanskriti, that is in the foundation of a Deva Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya. When Gurudev envisioned the Deva Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya, he said the scripture, they talk about the Bharati Sanskriti in the manner it is written, like, Ayam Nijaha Paroveti, Ganana Laghu Chetasam, Udara Charita Nam Tu Vasudhev Kutumbakam. That this is mine, that is yours. This concept belongs to the narrow-minded people. For those who are feeble-minded, they think this is mine and that is yours. For those who have got the bigger hearts, for them, Vasudhev Kutumbakam. Vasudha means planet. Kutumb means family. For them, every single person of this planet is part of one single family. And in this internship program allows our students to feel part of one single family in any part of the world, in any part of the India too. So the internship model is there to allow students to develop comprehensively and also for them to learn that how we all could live together, coexist together in a harmonized world. So I, I hope that Sir Ashkwit and Lady Ashkwit would enjoy their stay here. It's a very short time available, but you would return with fondest memories and feeling like a family. Uh, one thing that Sir Ashkwit has just mentioned, that next year, in collaboration with the Association of Commonwealth Universities, uh, he is uh, trying to develop a program where he would like the youth of Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya to participate. So on behalf of Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya, I give the consent for Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya to participate in the maximum. And uh, I would also like to share with you that in collaboration with the University of Cambridge and Faith in Leadership Foundation, we are developing the first ever center of the Institute of Leadership here in the Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya. That would take about an year to develop. And we sincerely hope that that would become another occasion to have you here in your home, home in India, in Haridwar, in Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya. So again, a very warm welcome on behalf of Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidyalaya family, Shanti Kunj family, Gayatri Parivar family, and I hope that you would enjoy your stay in return with some fondest of the memories. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And now the moment which we all are waiting, that we have with us a persona with a rich experience, a rich career in diplomacy, and not only in this field, rather it is spread across multidisciplinarity. So let me take the pleasure to share with you a brief profile of a persona who started his journey, his professional journey in early 70s. He worked with Musa Alami project. He worked as a researcher with different, different organizations. He also been a freelancer journalist. He worked as executive secretary for parliaments. And he also worked as first secretary of Muscat, as desk officer, private secretary to Ministry of States, first secretary to Washington, 
and the list goes on, goes on, goes on. He is also Senior Advisor at Denton LLPS, Senior Director, Macro Advisory Partners, Senior Advisor, Group DF International, Chairman, Libyan British Business Council, and he holds many, many, many responsibilities, but he is a very humble person, he is a very knowledgeable person, and we are very pleased that today he has spread some of his valuable time with us. So it's our pleasure with your thunderous clappings. I would like to invite High Commissioner of United Kingdom to India, Sir Dominic Esquidji, for his words of wisdom, for his speech. Please welcome Sir Dominic Esquidji. Well, a very, very warm, uh, literally, a very warm good morning to you all. I'm feeling the heat a little bit more, I think, than you are. But uh, it's a real privilege to be here, a real ple pleasure to be here. Uh, and life is full of surprises, as I keep finding in my year and a half in India. Uh, and it's a great pleasure to have that chance to do something which I uh, got to know very soon after arri arriving in India that everybody in India, and I think that means every single one in this room, is very adept at rhetoric, at giving speeches, without hesitation, without repetition, uh, doing it off their cuff. So I know I'm competing with some extremely good speakers in the room. Look, it's, a, it's a, been a, an extraordinary week this last week. Uh, it started with business in Chandigarh, and then my wife Louise and I uh, disappeared up into the mountains to go to the Valley of the Flowers. And we realized how old we had become. So s looking at this huge room full of very young people, I have to say, I think we both would have drawn some of your young energy with great pleasure uh, over the last three days as we were climbing up the mountains puffing, panting, not quite sure whether our hearts were going to exist at the end or still be beating at the end of this. But uh, it was a wonderful time up in the mountains. Uh, when I get fitter, I think we'll go back. Uh, but I see I'm going to have to do some training uh, up here if I'm going to exist and enjoy all the pleasures. And then we came down uh, on these, past these landslides. My goodness, how many landslides there have been to uh, up, up the river to Rishikesh and to, do, to perform our first Aati last, uh, again. Uh, an extraordinary uh, pleasure and, uh, and an experience we had not had before. Uh, and now to come to Haridwar, which I've been wanting to come to for so long, and realize, as programs so often do, uh, they get condensed uh, into a very short time. And as Dr. Pandya so kindly and so rightly said, uh, I would love to come back uh, to what he calls a family. I am so impressed by what Dr. Pandya has been describing to Louise and to me before we entered this hall about the, the breadth, the scope of the learning, of the experience, uh, of the understanding of the world that you are prepared with before you uh, in this institution as you go out and what you do when you do go out into the world to help the global family, all those outside. So I congratulate you. I am so impressed uh, by what I hear of what you do. I know that there are uh, fellows, students from Britain who come and experience uh, it here as well. Uh, I envy them. It must be an extraordinary experience to do so. And I've learned, as always in India, in a very short time, a number of things uh, I'd never heard of before and never understood before. I am uh, in awe of uh, Dr. Pandya's grandfather. And the number of books he wrote is quite phenomenal. The learning that that uh, means, not just in study of Sanskrit, but in interpretation of the texts. And the uh, determination and vision that he had to establish uh, an institution like this, which has persisted and produced, uh, as you are here in this room, people who are so important to society, a society which is going through such an extraordinary change, 
having to adapt to the uh, changes in technology and in communications in the ability of, uh, of technology to change our lives faster very often than we can adapt to those changes. And it requires people like you who understand the values, uh, the individuals uh, who surround you, the community in which you live, and how to deal with those challenges. It requires people like you uh, to make this world uh, one in which the challenges are not threats, but they are opportunities. And the way that you react to them is so important in terms of how you shape the society and indeed the world in which we live. It's a real privilege to be here. I bring you very, very warm greetings uh, from Britain, from uh, both my government and from uh, our uh, royal family, who uh, I know have had dealings with uh, alumni of this institution uh, and Dr. Pandya. Pandya. It is uh, a very, very close bond that uh, links our two countries. Uh, it was, of course, very prominent uh, a couple of days ago uh, in your independence, 70th year of independence. I congratulate you on that. It's a wonderful set of achievements. And the thing that uh, I will leave you with one last thought, and it's very relevant to the ethos uh, of this institution. It's a, a phrase that uh, I stole. You don't often uh, tell people that you've stolen something. But it's a phrase I stole from Prime Minister Modi when our Prime Minister, Theresa May, was here in November. He talked about the living bridge. Prime Minister Modi was a, a, a bridge between India and the one and a half million British citizens of Indian origin. For me, and what we're doing, it's, it's even more than that. It is the links, the bridge, and the bridges carry people both ways. It's a bridge that carries people, ideas, technologies, it connects institutions in Britain and in India. And there are so many examples that go around India of that living bridge of people or institutions who are working together, are collaborating in Britain and in India. Just to pick at random uh, a number of examples, those of you who know cricket, and I suspect you all do, uh, there are two types of cricket ball. There is one which is less good which the Australians, and sometimes I think you use, call the kookaburra. And there's one which is much better, uh, which we use in Britain, called Dukes. Now, Dukes was a company that was set up 200 years ago and more. And back in 1984, a, a gentleman called Dilip Jajodia, who came from Chidambaram, bought that company moved it from the very traditional rural setting of Seven Oaks or Tunbridge Wells, I think, which is in the heart of the countryside, into the center of London, Walthamstow. And today, from 1984 when he bought it, till today, and it's still going, he makes every single Duke's cricket ball that he's ever produced. Now, it's just one tiny example. There are uh, so many I could give uh, of uh, those links of the Chevening Scholars, the flagship award that the Foreign and Commonwealth Office provides, the biggest program of Chevening Scholars of Masters, uh, DPhils, uh, mid tour, uh, mid term, mid career breaks that we allow in the UK. Two and a half thousand alumni also are here in India. It's the biggest program we have in the world. We're really proud of it. And there are, uh, the, my point is that there are these links. Uh, for example, the institutions, Cambridge University, which runs programs all the way from Jammu down to Bangalore, from earthquake science to nanoscience, uh, Newcastle University and Kolkata Institute of Neurological Sciences, Oxford University and the India Institute of Sciences in Bangalore, working in one case on neurology, in the other case on affordable and high 
quality prosthetics. There are so many programs going on. Uh, and the point uh, of this story is to explain to you the relevance we each have to each other. We are all, we are working on both sides in Britain and India on subjects that are really important to the society in which you live. And unless that's happening, you don't really have a relevance. It's just an exchange, which doesn't necessarily mean very much. If you're working on something that is really important, and you're doing that every day, and when you leave this institution, then you're doing something really worthwhile. So I'm proud of it. I want to build that bridge, broaden it, have more people going over back and forth. Uh, and I look forward to, to you in this room forming part of that traffic of people, of ideas, uh, of uh, new thinking across that bridge. Uh, and we will welcome you, of course, in Britain. So thank you for being here. Thank you for the occasion. Uh, I congratulate you, gentlemen and ladies, on what you're doing. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, work, and I wish you the very best future. So thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We are grateful to you for your words of wisdom filled with experiences of life. And I want to tell you that in this auditorium, almost every individual is representing different states of India. So all the states of India are being represented here with our international friends also. So this message, this idea will come into action. Proceeding further, now it's time to felicitate our guests. So I would like to request our Vice Chancellor, sir, Mr. Sarat Pardi, sir, along with our Pro Vice Chancellor, sir, Registrar, sir, to kindly join in the felicitation. The memories of Deva Sanskrit Vishwadhyale, which are going to travel with our honorable guests today, are being presented to them. Let's put our hands together for this wonderful occasion. What a momentous occasion. The literature of Pooj Gurudev along with the memento is being presented to our chief guest. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And now it's time for Shanti part. We will end the ceremony with Shanti part. I request you all to join us in Shanti part. Om Dyo Shanti Antariksha Gwang Shanti Hi Prithavi Shanti Rapah Shanti Ro Shadhayah Shanti Vanaspatayah Shanti Vishwe Deva Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarva Gwang Shanti Shanti Deva Shanti Sama Shanti Redi Om Shanti 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 Sarvarista Shushanti Bhavatu Aap sabhi apne sthaan pe bane rahe. Now it's time when our guests are moving towards the next destination.